Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today with the topic of the barrier potential. Alright. Barrier. Or it is also called as built in potential. Built in potential. And you basically know what it is. But <clears throat> let me revise it for you. So, if this is a material that has been doped, let's say over here, fine. So, at the P side, we have the negative immobile ion with the hole. Right. At the end side, uh, or let me draw the depletion region. So in the depletion region, the depletion region has been depleted of the free charge carriers and we only have ions over here. Now these positive ions, they belong to the N side. The N side has positive ions with electrons. Donors or acceptors, you know that. Which side is donor, which side is acceptor. All right, now what happens, we have doped one side with a P-type material, we have doped the other side with an N-type material. This is called an implantation, right? Now what happens due to the process of diffusion, the majority carriers on one side move to the other and similarly for the other side. So we have a hole in majority over here, they move to the other side, the recombination takes place, we have positive ions. Electrons move over here, they recombine with the holes, we have negative ions on this side. So, this red portion basically shows the depletion region. And I told you that the width of this depletion region is fixed for any material. This is the width of the depletion region WD and we have an associated barrier potential now. Now what happens if more electrons want to flow, so we have an electric field established. We have an electric field established which is in this direction. So now this electric field stops the further flow of majority carriers from one side to another. Alright, so I forgot to mention the <coughs> minority carriers. So we have the electrons in minority at this side and the holes in minority on that side. Alright, now this electric field, the potential, this potential, electric field has a potential, right? from positive to negative. Let's say this is acting as a capacitor. So we have a potential in between the plates and this potential is acting as a barrier for the further flow and the further recombination of the majority charge carriers to increase the width of the depletion region. So this potential, this electric field potential, this electric field is known as the barrier potential or the built-in potential represented by a V and a subscript B. Is that fine? So in this video, we talk about the relationship of this VB, the, the equation of this VB. So we don't, we, we are not interested in the derivation, neither is the book interested, but I just needed to tell it to you guys. So this VB, the formula for this VB is equal to KT by E and we have ln of the natural log of N A N D and hold divided by N I squared. So this is the equation for the barrier potential V B. Now what are these values? So I'm just telling you now. So this K, this K is called the Boltzmann's constant. K is the Boltzmann or whatever the name is, Boltzmann's constant. 
and its value is so let me have written it down it is a 1.38066 1.38066 into 10 to the negative 10 to the negative 23 joules per kelvin so this is the equation so this is for k all right now t t is the absolute temperature absolute temperature which means this is in degree kelvins all right uh, this e is the magnitude of charge on one electron uh, charge on one electron which is 1.6 into 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, right? Yes, which is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Then Na, this is the acceptor ions concentration. Acceptor ions concentration. And what are the acceptor ions concentration? They are on the P side, right? So we have the acceptor ions concentration on the P side. All right. Uh, ND is the donor ions concentration. Donor ions concentration. And this is on the N side because we have the donor ions on the N side. What else remains? NI, this is the intrinsic, uh, what? The intrinsic carrier density. Intrinsic carrier density and this represents the doping level. Intrinsic carrier density. It represents the level of doping. All right. So these are the things that are in uh, uh, written over here in the formula. Now this KT of E by E represents the the the, the voltage equivalent of temperature. All right. So actually the temperature is given and we and the formula is for volt so we need to convert it into volt so this kt by e this kt <coughs> by e this we represent as a vt so this vt is the voltage equivalent of temperature and the value uh, we can find out, let's say at room temperature, if we take the value as uh, 27 degrees, so uh, let's say T is equal to 27 degrees, which means this would be 27 plus a 273, which makes it a 298 Coulomb uh, degree, is not Coulomb, Kelvin, right? So 298 Kelvin, we have the temperature. <coughs> K is given, E is given. So when you find this value, so the value Vt equals 0 0.26 volts. And this we will be using very much uh, later on in the course. The value of the thermal voltage we take as a 26 millivolts, right? 26 millivolts. So this is an important uh, uh, thing to remember. Vt is equal to 26 millivolts. So now what we, uh, what do we have further? We don't have anything over here. I wrote an example for myself. Uh, where is it? Okay, here is it. So, so if you're given a question, let's say, or it's not a question, it's just a simple example. Let's say we talk about room temperature. Room temperature. This is an example. So Na is given, the acceptor ions concentration that is on the P side is given to be 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube. Nd, the donor ions concentration is given to be 10 to the power 17 per centimeter cube. The intrinsic carrier density Ni is given to be 1.5 into 10 to the 10 per centimeter cube. And they ask you what V S or what V B, what V B is, sorry, what V B is. And they have mentioned that this is for silicon. All right. So now if you use the formula, if you, if I name it formula one, let's say this is one or A or whatever you want to name it. 
So putting values in 1, 1 implies <coughs> that Vb is equal to, now K, T, Y, E, you don't need to do it again the calculations, you directly take Vt. So I can write formula 1, also I can write it in this way, 1 implies Vb is equal to Vt, Vt and Vt at, at room temperature, alright, at room temperature. At room temperature, we have a 26 millivolt or 0 0.026 volt. Ln of <coughs> Na Nd over Ni squared. So this is for room temperature. <coughs> Sorry. Now you have any other temperature. So you have to put the values over here in degree Kelvin. Alright. So what do you have? Vb. Vb is equal to 0 0.026, 0 0.026 natural log of the values are given is 10 to the power 16 multiplied by 10 to the power 17 divided by 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 whole squared. So you solve them Vb, this will give you a 0 0.757. <coughs> So this means that at room temperature, the barrier potential of silicon is 0 0.757. This is a very important value to remember. Now what the books do, they consider the barrier potential rounded off, Vb is equal to 0 0.7. But have a look. If you round this off, this thing, by dropping these two digits, you have a 0 0.8. I don't know why. So we have considered it at 0 0.7. The books consider at 0 0.7. Now this at room temperature. All right. Similarly, similarly, we have the barrier potential for germanium. We will be considering is 0 0.3. This is for silicon and that is for germanium. So these two values are very important you need to remember so that's all about this lecture i also have the the formula for the width of depletion region uh, i should if i do it in this video so it would be very long so i let i remain this this let remain this portion this diagram and i will continue the width into the next lecture all right so see you very soon till then take care goodbye